Hi folks, if you've been watching my earlier videos, I run through the basic procedure of how to update the firmware on your Verbal joystick and throttle and also do your recalibration. Now we'll just load up the software again and I'll show you something else which is, might be quite handy. Okay, so um, the way that basically the software works is the Verbal device has a configuration on it which is the calibration, what way the axes are set up, and also whatever button configuration you currently have. That's stored on the device. When the software loads up, as you've just seen it do, what it does is it basically triggers this. So it gets the, the config information from the device, loads it into the, the configuration tool, and basically displays it. Now, um, right now, both my sticks are set up correctly, as in they have correct bindings, and the calibration has been done so when I push it all the way forward it knows it's all the way forward and that part's all good so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export that information out the configuration is going to come from the configuration tool export and then put it the config file so I've already selected the joystick it's already loaded it in I'm going to go now and export it so I'm going to create a new folder back up and we'll call it calibrated VPC warbird okay so that's basically I know it's the, it's the actual joystick and it's the calibrated version and now I'll go to the throttle downloading the config into the this program we'll export pull this on So this is the basic procedure for taking information from the device, moving it into the program, and also putting it out to a config file, which you can then import back in if, for example, you were playing around with the configuration for either the buttons, the axes, or something, and you managed to cock it up somehow. So the reason why I'm telling you to do this now is because if you start playing with stuff and you break it, you can load that profile in, and you know that it's got the basic configuration for all the buttons, and it also has the calibration already done, so it could save you some time if you're playing around in here and you cock something up. Okay, let's have a look at the throttle axis configuration part. So here we are, we're on the VPC throttle, we're on the axis mode, and this is currently listed what axes we currently have. Now, um, as you see, as I push the throttle forward, numbers increment and decrement accordingly. What you can do in this section here is assign a axis. So say, for example, 1 and say uh, 95 to 100. And then I could punch in a button here, like, I don't know, pull one out of my... Of the air, I don't know, 69. <laughs> so what that would basically mean is if I throw this configuration back, whenever axis 1 gets between 95 and 100 percent, what it will do is it will output a actual button press to the system, which I can then bind in the button press tab to maybe perform a function or send something to Windows. Next up, this little bit here, this deals with the uh, lock. Now, uh, I'm going to move, currently my throttle has a little locking bar across, uh, which means if I push either of them, both of them will move. So what this basically does is button action one, which I'm just going to show you here by moving the little slider over that unlocks it. And you can see that that goes active. Now, the way this is wired up, it, what it basically means is that when that button is in the lock position, it actually copies the reading from axis one into axis two. Because even if I was, even if they were even slightly skewed out, as in like half a degree or degree, these numeric numbers up here 
would be quite different. Now that's me trying to push them sort of close together. And you can see that you know you have to fiddle around a fair bit to get them to match exactly. So that's what this bit here does. When the switch is locked across, it basically copies the data from number one into axis two so that it will keep it 100% in sync even if they move slightly differently. So if you are moving your throttle backward and forward, you can feel that sometimes there's a wee couple of mil of difference between the two and this is the workaround for that. So that's quite clever. And that's basically it for the axis. The only other thing obviously is the calibrate which I showed before. I haven't used this function here. I honestly not sure what it does. So certainly not going to talk about it if I don't know. Right now let's uh, have a look at the uh, verbal software configuration button section now. So currently in button and uh, we're selecting the VPC throttle. And we'll just have a quick run through what the individual parts mean. That's not, well, the parts that I understand at any rate. Okay, this section here in the middle is a little indicator section that shows you which buttons are currently active on the joystick. And that basically means which ones are currently pressed. Now you'll notice there's four currently active. The 29 and 31 correspond to the little uh, toggle switches that are just to the right of the red cover. So if I flick backward and forward, you can see it toggles between the two of them being active, one being active with the two. There's no off state for these, so it's either going to be one active or the other active. See? This reset button status just basically sets it and clears the little tree. And if you notice, red means currently depressed. Blue means it's been depressed, but it is not currently pressed right now. So it's useful for seeing what, what the... Uh, button statuses are. So those four correspond to that. 32 corresponds to the actual red cover that covers the button that's underneath. If I lift the button cover up, that goes inactive. Basically when the cover's down, it presses against the back of the button and presses it down to have that 32 be inactive. And when uh, the cover is up in the up position, then it's off. If I push forward on the switch, uh, 33 goes active so that's basically a three position switch center position being neither 32 or 33 being active that back down okay so the last indicator that is permanently lit is the mode selector which is 55 so the mode selection stuff is down in this little section here so mode one this is an indicator mode two three four five these are little indicators so mode one is currently active and button 55 is what it's bound against, so that's why that's active right now. Uh, over here, we have uh, a column that allows you to configure the LED lights within the joystick to see what colors you want with, with different modes. So right now, mode 1 is LED color black, which means off, and the intensity, which is this column here, is set to 0, which also means off. So if I go to position 2, look at my stick it's it's lit up with a nice blue color go to three it's green okay so that's fairly self-explanatory and you can see over here as i move backward and forward it changes the current active one that's denotes what position it's at now if i were wanting to change the intensity here say for example it was too bright or whatever i just use the wee arrow here i set it the intensity one and I noticed straight away, as soon as I pressed that, the not sync uh, indicator went active. Basically what that means is that the configuration we're playing around with is just living directly on the, the tool right now. It's not the same one that's on the device. So it knows that we have made a change to something in here. And if I were to put that back to 2, it goes active again to say that yes, it's okay, it's equal to what it was before. So any changes we make here doesn't actually affect the joystick until we hit the save device profile. Once it does a save, it reads the information back in again and then holds it in the tool for us to play with and change things. Put that back the way it was.
Right, so showing you the indicators and I've shown you how to play around with the actual rotary switch that denotes what uh, modes you're currently in and to change the LEDs if you want to do such a thing. The last bit here, which is a slightly more complex section, is the mapping section. Now, what this basically means is these are physical buttons on the stick, which is also this column here, you see. What, what this basically means, I'll just open one of these up, is whenever physical button 10 is pressed, when it gets sent to Windows as button 8, that's the logical column here. I know it's kind of weird, it's a, it's a slightly odd concept, but I'll just quickly show you the Windows configuration. You can see what I mean. So, here we go. This is a Windows uh, status indicator for our little stick. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press button 10, which corresponds, physical button 10, which corresponds to the uh, pyramid uh, hat switch that's by your left thumb when you press it inward. I press that button. You can see it goes, uh, uh, 10 goes active. And over here, it goes active. So that's what it basically equates to. So physical button 10 is sent to Windows as button 8. As you'll notice here, we actually top out 32 buttons, but don't panic about that because the Windows can handle more. This only displays that. So this table here is a list of different mappings. It's taking the physical button on the joystick and then sending a logical button to Windows, and that's basically what this big table's for. Now, if you'll notice here, there's also a shift column and it doesn't seem to have much in it. I'll just scroll down to show you one that does have something in it because this is a bit of, I would describe it as a funny, but it's just a really odd way that they've done things. Now, at the very bottom of this table, your max number is 96. So you've got from 82 to 96 if you want to rebind things. Um, which is not a huge amount if you wanted to rebind a whole lot of buttons. Okay, so... Let's have a look at these ones because these ones are different. These ones are actually set to a mode. Now these buttons from 40 to 36, they correspond to the B buttons. Those are the square ones that are directly behind the actual throttle handles themselves. So button 40 happens to be B1. So if I press, there you go. Button 40 is currently going active and it's sending button 22 to Windows. Now, um, Windows topping out at a max count of 32. I can't really show you what this means uh, unless you use something else. So I'll have to use Joystick Gremlin. So here's good old Joystick Gremlin. So I'm pressing button 22. And that's what's being reported. So physical button 40 is now being reported as button 22. In mode one, that's what this column means. So I'll just open this one up. So button 22, physical button 40, shift state, which is the mode here, which corresponds to this. It means it's gonna send up button 22. Now if I scroll down here, you'll see it's got multiple bindings for that one button. So in mode two, it's gonna send button 50. Scroll down here, I've selected mode two on the rotary. And I press the button here, you can see 50 lighting up. So the way this basically works and the way that Verbal has set the software out, the B1 to B8 buttons have different mode functions. So if I were to go to select the rotary to mode 3 and press B1, it would send button 58. Same button in mode 4 will be 66. And same button B1, which is 40, a physical button. Will send 74. So that's basically the way the shift states work currently in the default configuration. So it doesn't give you a huge amount of extra space here to start playing with other buttons. But there is a workaround for it, and I contacted Verpal and they give me a configuration file that allows you to um, 
use the rotaries differently but you will have to use some external software yeah example joystick gremlin to actually expand all the other buttons the way you want them to be so that's for a different video so that's a basic overview of the um the buttons tab and what each of the different bits do i honestly don't know what this extra stuff here does i haven't played with it i don't think i'll play with it because i don't know what it does and it could do weird things it's one of the reasons why it's good to back your configuration up There is one more thing which I nearly forgot about and it is to do with the colours. These little drop downs here in this column control the colours. So say for example I want to change this uh, position 1 to be a different colour. Change this weird ass purple. Set a value. And then save. And now the joystick displays the color purple whenever I'm in mode one. So if you want to change, you can change the colors whatever you want here. Change the intensities to whatever you want. It's very easily done. If I want to change that back, set it back to, set it back to black, set to zero, and save.